Hi everyone, welcome to True North Online. Thank you for joining us here, whether you're on our Facebook page or over on our YouTube channel, it is great to be able to stay connected in this way. We know that this wasn't the way that we wanted to have Sunday service, but uh, with things changing on Thursday, it just wasn't possible for us just to safely gather together. We want to make sure that we're doing everything possible to allow this circuit breaker to do what it's intended to do, uh, bring those numbers down of COVID-19 cases and to take the pressure off our healthcare system. So we felt like it was just safe as this is continuing for one more week, just to be able to, to meet online again uh, and uh, just be able to do our part here in, in our part of the county. So thank you for your prayers for our community, for those that are affected directly by COVID-19, uh, for our government, for those that are leading us and trying to make decisions that will have uh, good long-term implications for our province. It's not easy, so continue to lift them up in prayer. So that means here at True North that the building is going to be shut down for one more week. And uh, I feel like I've been saying that a lot through COVID-19. One more week, one more week. Well, we hope that uh, as this week progresses, numbers go down and hopefully we'll be able to meet in person next Sunday. So uh, we'll probably make an announcement uh, about that later this week. Uh, continue to pray for the Ministry of True North. Our uh, board met last week and our deacons met last week. We are so thankful for our leadership here at True North and just how they are just seeking the Lord's will and how to have effective ministry continue to take place in this day that we are in. The board had to make a tough decision this past week. We have decided to no longer pursue filling the position of pastor of youth and family ministries. They felt like with the financial state that we are in right now, we are really feeling the pressure from COVID and the pandemic. And so uh, the finances just are not there for us to be able to step out and to be able to fill that position. So continue to pray for us and uh, for wisdom for our board as, uh, as the year uh, transitions next year and hopefully things get better, that as things stabilize and we see some improvement in our finances and giving, that, uh, that we will look at that uh, again and see if we are in a place where we can uh, fill that position. So uh, just continue to pray for us. Thank you for our amazing volunteers that are allowing uh, great ministry to continue with our youth and children here at True North. We are so grateful for them of giving other time and their talent and just supporting our youth and supporting our children in our area. Uh, wonderful ministry is continuing to take place. Also at our board meeting last week, we were blessed to be able to uh, pass the motion to officially welcome into fellowship Tanner Glant and Jacob Choco. They were both baptized over the summer. And so our process now is uh, once someone has uh, followed the Lord in the waters of baptism, they want to become a member here. Uh, that, that name is brought forward at the board. They vote on it and, and they are now members. So we were able to celebrate with them uh, as they uh, join our, uh, officially join our family here at True North. And we also want to continue to encourage you in, in our giving. Let's give together. Let's uh, help the, the ministry of True North um, thrive. Allow our finances not to limit us in what we are doing here at True North. And, uh, and as you give to the ministry of True North, you're investing in the ministry. You are part of the ministry here. And so uh, we want to encourage you to be generous in this way so that as we end this year, that strong ministry will take place. Uh, we know there is still a lot of things that need to happen. Um, you know, we need to be able to meet with people. Uh, you know, my counseling load has been heavy and uh, just connecting with people who are feeling the, the, the pandemic pressure on them. And so, uh, so I'm able to connect with people to encourage them in this difficult day that we are in. We know that uh, as fall comes and Christmas is on the horizon, that there will be needs that are out there uh, in our community. And so we want to be able to have finances to be able to help meet those needs. And so, uh, so there's still a lot of things that need to take place here. And so we really need you to, to help us in this way and to pray for the gifts as you give them and to pray for the ministry so that, uh, so that we can thrive, that we can finish strong in this year. So continue to uh, pray for us, continue to support us, and may God continue to bless us as we reach out in the name of Jesus.
Our music today is going to be, I went back in my files, I guess, and was uh, clicking through to see some of our old services. So today I uh, went back to Father's Day, June 20th. And so the guys are going to be providing special music for us this morning. And uh, so you will notice that there are people in the congregation. This is June 20th when we were allowed to gather together. But, uh, but let's have some fun with the, the guys leading us in worship this morning. Let us pray as we come. Gracious God, we are so grateful to be able to have technology that we can still gather as the church. And so wherever this is being watched, we pray that it will become a, a holy moment where you meet with your people. May you challenge us today. May you speak to our hearts today. God, we need your encouragement today and that you would just pour out a blessing. We continue to pray for our community and those that are directly affected by COVID-19. We pray for our nurses, our teachers, our frontline workers in this, that you would just give them strength, God. Just lift them up. We just pray that you would just be with those that are just feeling the isolation of COVID-19 and the circuit breaker that they're in, that, God, you would draw close to them, that they would feel that you are with them. And we just pray that, uh, that God, we would find ways to encourage one another through a phone call, through an email, whatever it might be, just be able to connect with people, to let them know that we're thinking of them. And God, may it just bring them a little bit of, of warmth and love and light in this cold and dreary time. God, we just pray that you will meet with us here today. In Jesus' name, amen. Uh, our first song is called Rattle. It'll probably be a new one to most of you, but it's just, just got such a powerful message. I just love the... Love the words in the verses here. The first one is talking about the weekend of the crucifixion. It says, Saturday was silent, surely it was through. But since when has impossible ever stopped you? Friday's disappointment is Sunday's empty tomb. Since when has impossible ever stopped you? And we serve a God who can do the impossible, don't we? There's nothing that he can't do. He's able to save. He's able to heal. He's able to raise the, light, raise the dead to life again. He was able to raise himself from the dead. That's the God I want to follow. And our call to worship is taken from Ezekiel 37. And it's just uh, telling of a story of where God just demonstrated his power to the prophet Ezekiel. It reads, uh, The hand of the Lord was on me. He brought me out by the Spirit of the Lord and set me in the middle of a valley. It was full of bones. He led me back and forth among them. And I saw a great many bones on the floor of the valley, bones that were very dry. He asked me, Son of man, can these bones live? I said, Sovereign Lord, you alone know. Then he said to me, prophesy to these bones and say to them, dry bones, hear the word of the Lord. This is what the sovereign Lord says to these bones. I will make breath enter you and you will come to life. So I prophesied as I was commanded. And as I was prophesying, there was a noise, a rattling sound. The bones came together, bone to bone. I looked and tendons and flesh appeared on them. Skin covered them, but there was no breath in them. Then he said to me, prophesy to the breath. Prophesy, son of man, and say to it, this is what the sovereign Lord says. Come, breathe from the four winds, and breathe into these slain, that they may live. So I prophesied as he commanded me, and breath entered them. They came to life and stood up on their feet, a vast army. Wow, can you just imagine being Ezekiel, being able to experience that? To see the power of God be able to bring old dry bones and turn them into a vast army. That's the God I serve. Amen, church.
to praise, make a dead man walk again. Open the grave, I'm coming out, I'm gonna live, gonna live again. This is the sound of dry bones rattling. My God is able to save and deliver and heal and restore anything that He wants to. Just ask the man who was thrown on the bones of Elijah if there's anything that He can do. Just ask the stone that was rolled from the tomb in the garden for hell. you a question and maybe you want to leave a comment uh, below or, or maybe you don't have you ever been in a heated discussion with somebody and maybe you are more worked up than you ought to be and they have said to you you know what why don't you just calm down has that ever worked if it has worked then why don't you put a comment below saying you know what uh, yeah we were in a heated discussion one time and I said and they actually calmed down or maybe to take a phrase from uh, from my teenage years that you've told someone to take a chill pill and uh, and and did they receive that favorably uh, be interesting to know well I told you today in my email that I sent out this past week that I was going to share with you some verses that you probably wouldn't want to hear as we go through this pandemic year, hearing the phrase pandemic weary more and more, and we feel it every time the news changes, uh, you know, the circuit breaker was extended one more week. Oh, you just, you just feel it. You feel the heaviness of it. And, uh, and it is frustrating. And so as I was preparing for today, we were hoping to be able to meet in person, but here we are online. I was thinking of some verses, and I, and I know that I've even preached from these verses as, uh, as we've gone throughout this pandemic. And sometimes, to be honest with you, uh, it feels like, you know, I, I'm reading the words, but I'm really not taking them to heart. And so, uh, so here's a couple verses for us this morning. And I wonder how they make you feel that in this time of feeling anxious, in this time of feeling weary, in this heaviness of the season... You know, how do we receive these verses? Jesus says in Matthew 6, 34, Therefore do not worry about tomorrow, for tomorrow will worry about itself. Each day has enough trouble of its own. I read that verse and it's just like, I've read it so many times, I think, through this past year. I wonder if I'm even really taking it in. It's like, Jesus, do you really understand what I'm going through? You know, and I read these verses, and I think, you know what, I read these verses when things are going well, it's like, yeah, Jesus, that's exactly what we need to hear. You know, I don't have any worries today, and I probably won't have any tomorrow, but yeah, that's a great verse. But it's in the moment of where we worry and where we feel the heaviness that we wrestle more with this verse, and we even sometimes question what is being told to us. But here is Jesus in his Sermon on the Mount, He's telling us, therefore, do not worry about tomorrow, for tomorrow will worry about itself. Each day has enough trouble of its own. It's a tough verse to hear. How about this one? 
over in uh, Philippians chapter 4 verses, uh, I'll start in verse 4 and I'll go through to verse 7 here. Rejoice in the Lord always and again I will say rejoice. Do you even feel like doing that today? Let your gentleness be evident to all the Lord is near. Do not be anxious about anything. But in every situation, by prayer and petition, with thanksgiving, present your request to God. And the peace of God, which transcends all understanding, will guard your heart and your mind in Christ Jesus. Do you hear, do you hear that? Do not be anxious about anything. And again, I read those and I think, come on. Do you understand what we're going through here? In the difficult times. You know, it kind of takes us back to our story last week that we looked at with Paul and Silas and talking about the church being persecuted and they were in prison. And instead of responding how probably most of us would want to, in that harsh condition, in that moment, we see them in prayer and singing songs to God. And you think, really? How can I get to a place where I am not going to worry about anything and I'm not going to be anxious, but my faith will be so strong that it will carry me through? Well, where I want to spend most of my time this morning is back with the prophet Isaiah. In Isaiah chapter 40, he is giving words of comfort to God's people. And he starts in verse 27 with these words. Why do you complain, Jacob? Why do you complain? Or why do you complain, Jacob? Why do you say, Israel, my way is hidden from the Lord. My cause is disregarded by my God. Here in this verse, he's saying, Israel... You feel like you are all alone. You feel like God is not seeing your situation. You feel like God is not responding to your situation. And when I sat there and I read that, I thought, really? I can put me into this piece of scripture. Why do you complain, Michael? Why do you complain? Why do you say... My way is hidden from the Lord. My cause is disregarded by my God. And we need to be careful as we journey through this pandemic. We need to be careful to think that God isn't aware of what we are going through. Isaiah continues, Do you not know? Have you not heard? The Lord is the everlasting God, the creator of the ends of the earth. He will not grow tired or weary, and his understanding no one can fathom. Isaiah is telling us, telling the people of Israel, and telling us today, that we need to remember who our God is, the creator of the ends of the earth, the creator of everything. And he will not grow weary. He will not grow tired. And we can't even begin to understand how he is looking at our situation and what he is doing in the middle of our situation. And here is a great teaching for us that our God who does not grow tired, our God who does not grow weary, our God who is always looking upon us. In verse 29 it says, He gives strength to the weary and he increases the power of the weak. Even youths grow tired and weary and young men stumble and fall. But those who hope in the Lord will renew their strength. They will soar on wings like eagles. They will run and not grow weary. They will walk and not be faint. This piece of scripture has um, some terminology in there that implies that, that this is an exchange that takes place between God and his people. Our God who cannot grow tired and weary exchanges our tiredness and weariness for his strength. 
Jesus talks about this, about, about taking his yoke, for it is light and it is easy. Casting our burdens upon him. And here, the prophet Isaiah is telling the nation of Israel that in those moments that we can be distracted by our world, when we can grow tired and weary because of the life that we are in, the time that we are in, it is then that we need to remember that our God will not grow tired or weary. This past week, we had a deacons meeting. I told you in our email that I was going to share with you some words of wisdom from our deacons meeting. So I know you're all just kind of waiting of what words of wisdom I'm about to share with you. And it was interesting. We were talking about uh, this pandemic and people being weary and just feeling the heaviness of this and, uh, and focusing, really putting all of our focus on all of the problems that are out there. And there are so many you can't even begin to pick or choose or list them. And we were sitting in our meeting and, and Brent was sharing. And I told him I should run and go get my video camera and put this on tape because it was, it was uh, just so encouraging. He was saying, you know, the problem is, is that we are looking at our world, but we can't fix our world. We are looking at our country and we can't fix our country. We're looking at our province and we can't even change things in our province. We can't even change things in our county or our town. But when we bring it down to those people who are around us, whether that is your home life, people at school or at work or wherever it may be, your little bubble that we are connected to, it is there that we can make changes that will make a difference. Isn't that great? You know, so often we look at this pandemic and it is a global pandemic and we read the news and we spend all the time looking at all the problems of our world. But we need to maybe not, not cast those things away and not be aware of those things. We're not saying that at all. But we need to remind ourselves that no, we cannot change the, the great big uh, problem that is all around us. But I can do something in my part of the world and as followers of Jesus, we would say, in my part of the kingdom, that can make a difference. That can change my perspective. That I can look at it in a positive way and say, what can I do here for Jesus today? What difference can I make for my God? Isn't that great? If you change your perspective and say, not, you know, how can I fix all of these issues out there and man alive, everyone's got an opinion on how to fix it all. I say, how can I make a difference here today? How can I make things better where I am? How can I transfer my weariness and tiredness to God and for him to give me strength for the moment I'm in? What can I do for Jesus here, now, today? This ties in really well with what Sheila has been doing with our youth. This past week, uh, each day, she has posted on our True North Youth uh, Facebook page, and we've been sharing it on our True North uh, Baptist Facebook page, some healthy habits for our youth and for us as well. And these go hand in hand with what we are reading here this morning as God gives us strength for the day that we are in. Here are some healthy habits to help us through each day and to help us improve our part of the world that we live in. Healthy habit number one, drink water, eat well. Simple. Two, get plenty of sleep. So often we are just obsessed with the news and everything around us that we are up late, we're watching things, we're reading things, and our minds just become so busy that we're not getting the rest that we need. Healthy habit number three, get fresh air and exercise. Just get out, go for a walk. Maybe that's just the length of your driveway and back. 
Maybe it's through the woods, put on Hunter Orange this time in Carlton County. You better be safe. And just enjoy the fresh air and some exercise. Number four, limit your time online. This is key. We are seeing everybody else's problems. It is coming at us so quickly. And Sheila was telling me, you know, our, uh, she was reading an article where our mind isn't meant to process this much information so quickly, so immediately and instantly that we need to limit our time online. Put your phone down. And number five, spend time with God. This can be woven through all of those healthy habits that as you know, we are, are drinking water, eating well, getting plenty of sleep, exercise and fresh air, putting our, our phones aside, that is an opportunity to, to pray and to worship just like Paul and Silas did when they were in their jail cell that we looked at last week. And when we take these healthy habits and we put them into practice, uh, may it be our prayer that we can say to God as I go through these steps that you will take my weariness and tiredness and that you will give me your strength. That you will give strength to the weary. Increase the power of the weak. So that those who put their hope in the Lord will be renewed in their strength. And as we put these things into practice this week, and I think Sheila has another five that she's going to be putting up on our True North uh, youth page and, and also on our Facebook page this week. She's got five more healthy habits for us. May those disciplines allow us just to be able to take a deep breath, to not be anxious about anything, but in this time of prayer and spending it with God that we will realize that we do not need to worry about what is going to happen tomorrow, for tomorrow will worry about itself. But we could just focus on Jesus in the here and now. And what difference can I make today for him? In my own life and in the life of those around me. It's so important. It's so important that we take time for our own spiritual, mental, and physical health. Because when we take the steps that are necessary to look after ourselves, it will have an impact on those in our immediate circle. Do you remember when we used to be able to travel? And uh, for those that, uh, that had to travel requiring a plane, and they would always give that safety video at the start of where the exits would be and to put on the life preserver. And they said, you know, in case of, uh, of loss of cabin pressure, that those masks would drop down from the ceiling. And do you remember what they always told you to do? To always put your mask on first before you were to help the person beside you. Because when we take care of ourselves, and it is not a selfish act at all when it comes to putting that mask on, because that will allow you to, to keep your consciousness and be able to effectively help those around you. Well, the same is true here. That as Brent was saying, you know, as we, as we cannot fix all of the issues all around us, but we can make a difference where we are. To make the greatest difference where we are, is to make sure that we are in a good place with God. And it is from that good, healthy place, when we are renewed, when we are given strength, when we are no longer weary, that we can be a blessing to those in our immediate surroundings. So why don't you take the challenge this week to do these five healthy, healthy habits. Drink water, eat well. Get plenty of sleep. Get some fresh air and exercise. Limit your time online. Spend time with God. See what difference it makes in your own soul and to those in your immediate cir circle. And may God bless us, strengthen us, and uplift us. So that we can come to a place where we read scripture and say, therefore, do not worry about tomorrow, for each day will worry about itself. Each day has enough trouble of its own. 
And that we can pray that prayer in, in Philippians. That, you know, that we will not be anxious about anything, but with prayer and supplication we will make our requests known to God. That we'll be able to take that deep breath and have a deeper trust that God is with us in this day that we are in. And that we can make a difference. If Paul and Silas that we looked at last week can sing and pray in a prison cell and rejoice because they knew that God was with them, then surely in the middle of our difficult day that we are in, that we can do the same and make a difference in our little part of the world, a difference for Jesus, so others may taste and see that the Lord is is good. I know it's tough. I'm hearing some very difficult stories out there of the situations that people are in and the heaviness of the moment and, and just the load that many people are carrying. I don't want to make light of that at all. But it's in those moments that we feel the heaviness of the world, may we experience the strength of our God. May we focus on him and invite him in to help us to carry this load. And I think with these five simple healthy habits that it will make a tremendous difference for the pressure of life that we are under right now. And may it be our prayer that we will soar on wings like eagles that we will run and not grow weary, that we will walk and not be faint. May God bless you on your journey this week. May you experience the, the, the strength and the power of God in your life like never before. And may this week there just be a sense of hope that you and I and that we can get through this and not only just survive this pandemic, but thrive in this pandemic. Let us pray. Gracious God, this is a tough season and every time things change with the news and, uh, and different rules are put into place and all those sorts of things, we see a rise in cases, we see rise in fatalities. It, it is tough. It is tough. God, we just pray that you would just be near to those that have lost loved ones through this pandemic. May they just feel your presence with them. And God, for those that are just, and many of us are, are just feeling the heaviness and the weariness of this day, may this passage in Isaiah just remind us of who you are, the creator of the heavens and the earth, and you will never grow weary. You will never grow tired. And I love how Isaiah writes this, that he encouraged us to exchange our weariness and tiredness to you for your strength. God, may we feel that today. And may we take the necessary steps that we need, healthy habits that will help us to put our struggles in perspective. Yes, they are real. Yes, they are heavy. But God, you are greater. And we just need some healthy habits that will help us to refocus and to be able to make a difference in our personal life, in the life of those immediately around us. And God, so I think of everybody that is watching this today, that if we all make the effort to improve our little part of the world that we are in, just that immediate circle of the people around us, that will impact so many more people. That they will see God at work through us. And Father, may they too desire to turn over their heaviness and their weariness to you in exchange 
for what Jesus offers to us. So God, may you bless us on this journey this week. May we feel a little bit stronger. May we feel even a little more hopeful and joyful. And may that just impact those around us, even just a little bit. Because a little bit of hope and a little bit of joy in the day that we are in will go a long ways. So, Father, take our weariness, take our tiredness, and give us your strength. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.
thank you for joining us today at True North Online. It is our prayer that next week that we will gather in person in this place. And uh, as always, uh, we will be uploading our videos as well from our Sunday service. So you can join us on Sunday afternoon or any time throughout the week so that we can worship together. Thanks for being with us today. Have a great week.